I don't even know where the chat is. Hi, friends. <laughs> it's my first ever YouTube live on a phone. So I'm just gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see how it goes and see if we enjoy it or not. So I don't really know what all the functions are or anything, but we're gonna give it a crack. <laughs> I'm hoping any text and stuff just like flies across the screen. So if anyone's popping on in, Come say hello. Because <laughs> uh, right now I am going to be just crocheting a little kangaroo. There we are. Hi, Talia. How are you? <laughs> um, I'm just crocheting a little kangaroo. I'm just making a, like the third or the fourth one. Because uh, I finally decided on the mod that I wanted to use for the kangaroo. Hi, Lauren. How are you? So I'm making a, another bigger kangaroo buddy. And just for everyone's information, I'm going to call it the kangaroo buddy and the joey buddy. Uh, just so I can differentiate them all. Hey Weez, how are you? Well, yeah, do I reckon for Ami Good Ami? Uh, depends who the product's for. I personally like using Parfait Chunky and by Premier Yarns. Otherwise, Honey Bunny from Hobie Yarns. Um, and a 5.5 millimeter hook. Mm, 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 mm. Making a granny stitch blank here, needed a reset from plushies. Yeah, I, I feel, yeah, sometimes it's just nice to do a different type of project and have something that's like a little bit mindless in a way. <laughs> that's what I find with the granny stitch anyway. It's like you don't have to focus on it that much because it's just very quick double crochets. No worries, Lauren. Happy to help. Hi, Booksworth. How are you? Um, I'm going to show everyone the mod very shortly because I'm very excited by it. <laughs> I've been trying really hard to figure out what I wanted to make this kangaroo mod look like, or because I, I really, really wanted to make it look like have it have like a bit more pizzazz or a bit more oomph. Because um, this is the kangaroo buddy at the moment, which might have little bits of fluff on it. So that's where it is at the moment, but like right now it's just very monocolored and I really, really wanted to add to it somehow. So I've actually made like little boxing gloves. <laughs> so I'm making like a blue kangaroo at the moment. It's got a little boxing glove and it has like two little, like I guess they're like tightening strings <laughs> on the sides. So I'm just making a, another kangaroo so I can attach the boxing gloves to it and so you can all see what it looks like. But I think that's a, like, a nice way of giving it a good pop of colour. I did try to make boxing shorts, but they look horrendous. <laughs> and I was like, these look so bad. I was like, because they need to look like big and wide and yeah, they didn't look very good. And I was like, okay, let's just cut that idea. <laughs> Hi Cheryl, how are you? Welcome along. Welcome to hanging out with me on my lives. <laughs> Now you guys can answer, or ask, not answer, you guys can ask, ask me anything you like. <laughs> While we chill out and make another kangaroo. And listen to Animal Crossing? <laughs> Study music? Because <laughs> I don't know what YouTube's like with like what kind of music I can play when I'm live. But this is the kind of music I play when I am doing a market. <laughs> I put like <laughs> just Animal Crossing sounds on and just to give the the Animal Crossing vibe or something like that. <laughs> because I want people to like come across my market store and be like, oh, this is a cute little picnic and there's like lots of little animals and they kind of got all their own little characteristics and ways. Um and then they buy the plushies. <laughs> it's my sales tactic. Mm, 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 mm. But what's everyone working on at the moment? Please let me know. Dun, dun. And also, can you hear the music? Oh, God. Hi, Alexandria. How are you? I mean, the music's not really playing anything right now. 
I heard some lo-fi hip-hop radio. While there's ads playing. <laughs> there we go. That's nice. Little Grey just made two bets working on a third mini. I can't thank you for my tutorials. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you like them. What kind of yarn are you using for them? And please, like, share or tag me in any photos you have for the bats, because I love seeing um, everyone's projects of my patterns. <laughs> once I had some... <laughs> once, <laughs> once someone commented on something of mine, and they were, like, I, I think it was the bat as well, and I was, like, showing off a bat I had just made. And they're like, oh my god, I made a bat, like, I made one as well. And I was like, yeah, like, oh my god, show me your bat, like... I'd love to see it. And it was just like someone else's bat pattern. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought it was like, I thought you're showing me one of mine. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Working on a five foot goose in a blanket? Oh my God. What do you mean five foot? Like, is it <laughs> like with like the giant blanket yarn or something? Okay, somehow I've caused myself to have a knot in the yarn and not a factory knot. <laughs> I'm just gonna untie that somehow. Haha, -ha, got it. Hi Lizard Crochet, Loops and Threads Terracotta, and Burnout Blank and Twilight. I am unfamiliar with those colors, but a terracotta color always sounds lovely to me. Once I went to Cusco in Peru when I had money again <laughs> um, and I went on a yeah I went to Cusco in Peru which is like one of the closest cities to Machu Picchu and the whole city was like a beautiful terracotta color and it's probably the like my most favorite city I've ever been to um and I know it has nothing to do with yarn and stuff I just <laughs> it just reminded me <laughs> Little blueberry muffin bats, if you will. Cute! That sounds fun. We're gonna market prep for a cat charity. Are you are you making cats? Per chance? Are you making that loaf kitty cat that I see everywhere? I think I was thinking this last night and I wrote it down in my notes because I need to keep in mind like any patterns that I think are being very viral or impactful for the next Yanni Awards. And I am hedging my bets on that little cat loaf as being like one of the nominees. Well, I'm gonna nominate it, but <laughs> I think it's like, I think that might be the, the one of the first viral patterns of 2024. I don't know if anyone else had any other ideas. <laughs> yeah, Loops and Threads is the Microsoft brand. Yeah, so was, I went on a US trip uh, June, July last year. And so I got Drew from Drewby Zoo to take me, all to take me to all the craft stores so I could see everything. <laughs> The goose is from Grace Face Creates. Oh, I love her. She tested my one of my patterns for me. I can't remember which one it was, but she is lovely. Um, but I know the goose. I'm familiar. Hi, Sarah Kenny. How are you? My kid keeps trying to tag them. Yeah, I really, really want to make a loaf kitty. <laughs> like, it's one of those projects that I see everywhere. I think every single creator has at least made one this year. Like, I think Crochet Grove made a few. I think I saw, is it Hooks and Healers? Hooks and Wheelers? Hooks and Healers, I think it is. Um, I believe she had some love kitties sitting in the background of her vlogs. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Hello, hello, I just want a mocha. What yarn do I use for my plushies? So I use a mixture of Honey Bunny from Hobie Yarns. Otherwise, it is uh, Parfait Chunky from Premier Yarns. And that's pretty much the only two yarns that I use. I am trying to source something for, like, in Australia. So soon I might be using something else. <laughs> if that all comes true. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But yeah, it's all I've been using those for, like, the past two, three years. Um... And I just love the feeling of it all. I love Chanel yarns. I do want to use like fuzzy yarns a bit more. Like I released that tips and tricks tutorial for 
um, different fuzzy yarns and how to work with them and things. And I made like half of like a mini bunny buddy. So I actually made the head and the body and I think like one ear or something. And I really want to make more things with this because I think this yarn always looks really cool. And it feels nice. <laughs> In Australia too, it's a shame that uh, Spotlight doesn't really do yarn. Yeah, Spotlight, Spotlight sucks. <laughs> like, I wish Spotlight had more yarns. Um, but they don't. They kind of like brought out this like value ball chenille yarn. And it was like a, it was like a variegated blanket yarn of sorts. But it wasn't amazing. It wasn't really what I like like there was only like three or four colors and so it wasn't really that good <laughs> you recently went back to uh, using regular worst of weight will have missed it yeah i've been thinking the same about doing some smaller projects recently but i like i don't think for me they sell as well which is kind of annoying <laughs> like uh, um like, I'd love to make more cotton projects or smaller weight yarn projects, but I want, like, at the moment, I'm actually market prepping, so I'm like, <laughs> I get And I know people will see them at the stores, and they won't, like, generally understand that, like, the, the cotton or smaller weight ones are actually more work than the plush yarns, you know? People want the chenille, I know. <laughs> I find faux fur types are so forgiving the final products if you have to keep random and create. Yeah, they do, they are. They're very forgiving. Like, they're very, very fun. Oh, they're very... How do I describe it? They are challenging projects, but because you can just, like, add an increase or a decrease just to kind of make it count to the right number, then it's fine. <laughs> Uh, what would you recommend for clothes? It depends, again, on what kind of clothes you're wanting to work on. So I like using cottons for summer wear, and then I like using just pure wool <laughs> for jumpers and things. So this is something I'm talking about in my next vlog, only very briefly, but it's this knit jumper that I actually finished. So knitting is like my hobby on the side, so I finally finished a raglan. I just need to uh, do the weaving in the ends and then actually block it, but I've never blocked something before, so just gonna do all of that. I might do all the weaving in the ends later tonight, but this one is a merino wool superwash, but that's what I'd use for winter clothes. And then cotton I'd use for acrylic, uh, cotton I'd use for summer clothes. I never heard of someone who's allergic to polyester instead of wool, that's wild. Oh my God, that's, I've, I've never heard about that either. Blocking is easy peasy. Yeah, I got some blocking boards from Amazon. <laughs> I just need to like set them up in my room because we live with a dog and I don't want dog hair on anything in my room. So I need to find a time where I don't need to move about <laughs> and I can have a woolen sweater dry on my floor. <laughs> Let's take it to my partner's house and force it upon him to have it drying there. Um, one second, I just need to double check the next part of this pattern. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's my own pattern, but even I don't remember what I've done. Okay, cool. Uh -uh -uh. Yeah, it looks really good. I'm needing to make another knit project very soon. Uh, I've got a lot more of that kind of rainbow wool that I have from my cardigan uh, that I used in the short today. I say rainbow wool, but it's like a a bunch of different bright rainbowy colors. <laughs> So I have a lot of leftover wool there that I was thinking about making a vest out of and like a matching beanie, maybe. I just don't know if I have the right needles. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. Otherwise, I do have a lot of this Arcane Fiber Works wool that I would love to undo and remake into something else because I made that tank in the tank. Even though it looks good on me, I don't think I'll actually wear it in the end. I wanted, like, a loose vest. <laughs> Steam blocking? Yeah, I need a steamer. <laughs> uh, is it stockinette? Uh, I believe it's stockinette. <laughs> it's a top-down raglan. <laughs> because steam blocking is when you have a steamer, right? And you just kind of... 
steam it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was supposed to get footage of this. I was telling, I'm, like, in the middle of filming another vlog, and I was like, I'm gonna go do a live. And I was like, do I get a footage of me doing the live? Maybe. <laughs> Make it all very meta again. Hey, Pinkberry. Recently got my bunny in overalls. Do you know the side? Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Two questions. Happy to answer. Uh, first of all, hi, chill. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, two questions. I recently got your bunny and overalls and your dino patterns. Do you know the size of the finished dino uh, plushie? Uh, do you think Hobie's honey bunny true or false does it shed and break easily? I think all velvet chenilles shed and break easily. You just have to be very gentle with the yarns. Uh, it's, it's just going to be how much you... Yeah. I don't think there's a way of avoiding shedding and breaking with yarns. That's, <laughs> that's as far as I go with that. But with the Dino Buddy, my ones always end up like a little bit... Sorry, I'm just going to knock everything down. Doing this for the science. So my Dino Buddy, I will measure it for you right now on camera. My ones always end up like a bit smaller than everyone else's because I have a very, very tight tension. Um, even though I have used Honey Bunny, this one's made with Honey Bunny as well. It's made with Honey Bunny Shine. Uh, but it's measuring to be about 22 centimeters height, which is about 9 inches. So I'd say probably if you have a looser tension than me, it'd be about like 9 to 11 inches tall, maybe 12. There you go. Uh, hi Mara, hello. Daddy, daddy, if you want me. Is that from the song? <laughs> oh no, where did I put my... Where did I put it? Oh, there. Hee <laughs> uh, Just like crushing a year ago, just finished a Mulan before getting into bed. Cute! Are you like a little cotton doll Mulan? Thank you, Pinkberry. Oh, Pink Beryl, sorry. I, I read that, that wrong. Apologies. Uh, could I make a duck? I haven't made a duck pattern yet. Uh, that's something I could ask my Patreon about. I'm going to start asking them to prompt my next monthly pattern. So keep an eye out on Patreon. <laughs> I did the dino and blanket yarn. It came up to be about 10 to 12 inches. Interesting. That, is that a Burnett blanket? Da, da, da. Ooh, where am I? Uh, thanks so much. I crochet and knit tightly. Dino for a baby. Juicy Couture Lux Lux Villa Jones only does does not shed and is strong. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, it depends on the kind of chenille yarn. Because like a blanket yarn tends to not shed. But if it's like honey bunny, that's more of what I'd call a velvet chenille, but it's not a velvet yarn. <laughs> that's where I go into the complexities. I think velvet yarn is more of like a shiny finish. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, I think you're right. It doesn't shed as much. I think velvet still sheds a little bit, and then a velvet chenille is more of like a matte feeling. Whereas a blanket yarn is a bit more... I personally don't like blanket yarn as much, but it's a lot more, uh, I want to say coarse. It's still soft, but it's not like a velvety <laughs> texture. Hello over in Indonesia. It is a low. Yeah, from, what is it? Competra Sisman Smith. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. I use thin yarn. It does look a bit like a rag doll. It's my second biggest project so far. I made a beagle the other day. Cute. Yeah, yeah, thin yarn. That's what I was thinking. I was like, if you're making like a Mulan, it's got to be quite detailed, right? <laughs> Hi, Aaron. How are you? Love to see a duck. See, I've got some options that I wanted to put out to my Patreon today. I've got it in my notes or like in my calendar to make a post about the four animals that I'm thinking of for um, May. I wanted to make something that would be a good animal in preparation for Pride being June. That would be kind of like a Pride, <laughs> a gay animal, I guess. <laughs> so I'm thinking of that. Uh, it's more sturdy is what I find. Not, not a fan of blanket yarn unless you need a specific color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. 
I'm doing super well. I decided I'd pop on here and give it a shot uh, talking on YouTube Live just to see how it is. So I'm still learning all the functions. The text is very small over here in comparison to TikTok, but the hey. <laughs> I've been enjoying using, like doing more YouTube content lately anyway, so TikTok, TikTok, TikTok can suck it. <laughs> um, mostly do bees for pride. Yeah, I have a bee pattern, which I actually don't even know where it's posted anymore. It used to be like a free pattern that I have linked on my website, but I can't remember if I've changed things up too much and it's just gone somewhere, but... Loaf Cats for Pride? Oh my god, Loaf Cats for Pride would be so good. What am I currently working on? I'm currently working on my kangaroo pattern. So I'm just making the head right now. Um, oh wait, sorry, I just lost count. <laughs> two, three, one, two, three. One, oh, one more. Um, so yeah, I'm just making the head right now, but I just need to make all the pieces and then I can do a little photo shoot for the pattern test and go and release that out to my Patreon as well as the wider public for applying. Uh, seems less glitchy than TikTok live to me. Yay, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, don't understand how to work TikTok. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is with like a YouTube live, it's good because it's... I actually get paid. <laughs> like, as much as I love TikTok for exposure, they do not, like, pay their creators well. Uh, whereas just being on YouTube and being uh, out here, talking to people, just engaging like I like to, I get a little bit of money from YouTube for doing that, which is really nice because I put a lot of effort into all my content and it's nice to actually get some kind of payment out of there. So even though I started as a as a TikToker in my crochet career, I'm definitely not vibing with it these days. <laughs> Even though it's where I get all my trends from as well. Uh, please take care of yourself. Always drink enough water, drink your vitamins, eat on time. I will, I will. Although I tend to forget because I get so like entranced in my crochet. <laughs> uh, where are we? What do you think I should make for my younger brother's 11th birthday? Uh, I made one of the... <laughs> I know my my nephew's only like three, but I made him a leggy froggy. Like I used a, it was kind of like a honey bunny big yarn, like a really chunky yarn, uh, and I used that to make a big derpy leggy froggy, and he loves it. <laughs> so I don't know if that'd work for like an eleven year old's birthday. It depends what they like playing with. I don't know, make a giant toy crochet lightsaber or something. <laughs> Do they still like Star Wars at that age? <laughs> uh, if you don't call the kangaroo buddy... Wait, what? If you don't call the kangaroo buddy Jack because of the boxing gloves, I might be a little sad. Is there... Is a kangaroo Jack the boxing kangaroo? <laughs> I feel like this is a reference I should know. I'm sorry, one more question. Do magic ring with eight single crochet is still possible? Yes. Yes, it does. But if you're doing a magic circle with eight single crochets on the head, it will only be reducing the point of a circle if you're going out to, like, increasing to 24 uh, stitches and, like, by the third round. Because you'd go from, your first round would be eight stitches, the second round would be 16 stitches, and the last, third one would be 24. Whereas usually it goes 6, 12, 18, 24. So I talk about that in my video of how to crochet with plush yarn. I talk a bit about how to avoid um, the... Oh my god. Wait, Sarah, are you the... Sorry, I just saw a message from Sarah. Are you the Love Cat designer? <laughs> oh my god, anyway. <laughs> I'm just sitting here, like, fangirling about your loaf cat pattern. <laughs> oh, not the original. Okay, sorry. Wait. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, embarrassing then. Never mind. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. You didn't have to. <laughs>
Uh, but yes, as I was saying, I have it over in my how to work with plush yarn video about how to avoid using the cone. There's a few different tips and tricks you can do for that. It's either like increasing your hook size in that first round so it's a little bit looser or even just crocheting looser in that first round or doing the magic circle eight. Um, when did I start crocheting and why? I started crocheting... When did I start crocheting? Back in 2018, I was in my workplace back when I worked in corporate as a little learning and development coordinator. Um, and there was a stitch and bitch club and I asked them what they're up to. And then that's when I learned about what crocheting was because I didn't even know, crazy enough. Um, and then they showed me how to make a little granny square or how to do a chain and stuff. And then I went home and watched a bunch of Bella Coco tutorials. <laughs> So that's where I started and that's how this all came to be. Uh, I wasn't intending on becoming a professional designer or anything, um, but here we are. <laughs> it was all just like passion that rolled into many different things. Is it 15? Did I do this right? So I'm just gonna double check my count. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh yeah, perfect. Uh, but yeah, that's how I started doing it. <laughs> what would you recommend for a first time crocheter as a project idea? Hello, Naomi, how are you? <laughs> I was at a local crochet club where I live. Yeah, I I love that. <laughs> I was thinking about doing the same in Melbourne, but because there's like a knitting club, if you know Jamie from Jamie Creates, who I have her knitting book somewhere. She just gifted it to me the other day. Um, but she started like a knitting club here in Melbourne and I wanted to do something similar of doing like a monthly catch up with a bunch of people in a park or in a cafe or something. And I'll just bring out little crochet projects and talk crochet. Because I went to the knitting one and I felt so outnumbered. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. I am in Melbourne. Hello. I am a New Zealander who lives in Melbourne. <laughs> What's my favourite thing I've ever crocheted? It, it was originally my Chikorita. So I made a giant like Chikorita from Pokemon using one-up crochets pattern. Um, which is right above us. I'll give us, oh look, I'll turn this around. Huh? So, big crochet chikorita. Otherwise, it might be the big bunny buddy. It's technically a fiber arts group, so all fiber people can come. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's what I was thinking. But then I feel like the knitting community, I feel like there's a bit of a difference between... Uh, I feel like the knitting community, you're very, what is the word? They don't really use polyester fibers. <laughs> so there's a lot of like, when I go to those knitting groups, they're all talking about the different yarn dyes and the different types of wools and things that you're using for knitting, which isn't what I use. And so sometimes I felt like it was a bit hard to talk to everyone because I was kind of like, well, I don't use these yarns at all. And like, I have different struggles. <laughs> Thanks, Mara. I appreciate it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, but yeah, what were you wanting me to recommend as a first-time crocheter? If you're thinking about like a pattern, I always just say practice on granny squares. I think that's the best place to start because that's where you learn how to hold a hook and how to understand your tension. And then after that, I'd probably go for a crochet B because then you can practice your sewing and you can practice just increasing decreasing color changes it's all within a little b pattern uh true moan knits and use very different yarns than i do yeah exactly so that's the same as me <laughs> so i know a lot about chenille yarns my mum knits and so she uses a lot of woolen yarns and i'm just like i don't know <laughs> yeah exactly but like also knowing a lot about chenille yarn is it's its own it's 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 on its own challenges <laughs> like understanding how to make it not break and how to make it not shed and how to sew with it and what looks good when you want to make like 
tiny details with a plush yarn. It's all, uh, it's all tactical. <laughs> Uh, you have your first market in three weeks. Oh my god. What are you making for it? Whereabouts is it? Is it in... Is it in... Because you're based in Australia, aren't you, Kayla? Sorry to dox you. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Because um, if you're in Sydney, maybe my friend Mel can pop along and see you there. If you know Hey, It's Mel B. She also does a few YouTube videos here as well. Just finished a bee plushie? Yes. <laughs> Maybe I do need to make a few more pride bees. Because I'm about to do a market as well. I'm doing the finders keepers market here in Melbourne. So if anyone is going to be around Melbourne for a very large market, come see me. Um, I'm a bit nervous too. I actually have a video that I should have been putting out today. And I probably should be working on it right now. But I decided to come on live instead. <laughs> Recently found my channel. Glad you did. Thank you. I'm glad you did too. I've been finding so many cool, cool people out uh, out here on YouTube. Like, it's such a different ball game. It's such a different crowd. I feel like I can be very creative with the kind of content I put out on YouTube. Um, because I feel like with TikTok and even Instagram at times, you kind of have to adhere to like trends or what shorts short reels really let you to uh, let you do uh, but i find with youtube i can actually put a lot more effort and variety into my content so i've been enjoying doing that <laughs> uh we'll come back later bye mara doing the 19th 20th i'm prepping right now oh my god yeah i think everyone's coming into market season i'm actually so I haven't released the video, but I am releasing like a four part series on preparing for markets because I just have like a bunch of different ways that I believe are good ways to prepare for a market um, and things to consider around pricing because I have my views on pricing <laughs> on inventory because I have my views on how to manage an inventory and uh, one that's just generally on prep and then one that's generally on display. Because my partner works in retail consulting, so if you saw me talking about my market, he was just all over it with his, with his, uh, insights on how to make it look pretty. <laughs> uh, yes, Canberra. Don't know Mal, but I'll have to check her out. I've got a lot in my inventory. <laughs> but you made your first capybara on a swing. Cute! I love all these animals that are on little swings that are like car holders. I know Crochet with Kelsey also did some uh, some of those. I really want to make those. Maybe I should make some of those in the market because that'd be such good market mix. I should know they're down somewhere. <laughs> uh, anyway, for the, the thumbs up is hidden in the three dots in the upper right hand corner in this format. That's crazy. Why would they hide the thumbs up? I was wondering why it was like only nine and I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, I still owe you for getting me back on Threads. YouTube is my next hurdle committing with, <laughs> towards your inspo. Yeah, Threads is interesting. I've actually, I don't know, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this, but I have a, <laughs> uh, I have a meeting with Instagram and Threads on Thursday, so that's going to be very cool. They've been enjoying my Threads content, so they want to bring me into a chat with them, which is very fun. Uh, Threads is cool. I really like posting over there. I find that community very interesting as well. It's very much like a playground for me. <laughs> for how I want to... I don't know. Yeah, it's just a playground of media. It is exciting, yeah. So it's really cool to be recognized for my efforts into social media and then be invited to, like, provide insights back to them. <laughs> I think they're finding Threads has been a super popular place for those who are wanting to grow, uh, for, for artists, really. So, uh, be my chat with Insta where they just yell at me for not using Threads. Yeah, I keep missing my, <laughs> sorry. I know Meta have been putting out lots of calls to talk to people about their content. Um, they, <laughs> I kept missing that call because it was a foreign number and I was like, stop calling me. I was like, I don't know who you are. Go away. Um, but then it was, uh, then there was a email that I got from, uh, 
someone who I'd kind of seen works at Instagram or connections and things like that. And then I just replied to her email because it was like a, it was a handbook on how to use the creator marketplace that they're launching on Instagram. And so then I just replied back to her and I was like, thanks, XOXOXO XO, <laughs> in the email. <laughs> and then she... <laughs> And then she replied back being like, oh, like, haha, no worries. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about your, like, Instagram thread stuff. And then that's how this started into, like, a conversation that's got me into talking to them about providing my insights. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, if that's not a lesson on just be yourself, then I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is all very much a true story letting you know uh i would recommend chickens yes i've seen so many people make the oak and marlow chickens and i was supposed to make some of my last market and i just never did <laughs> uh find social media hard because but uh, what i find social media hard so i think it's extra cool i i find social media to be my own uh interest in many ways like i have always loved social media since like the days of bebo if people remember bebo it was like around the time of MySpace, early Facebook, everything like that. I love the ideas of people uh, joining different communities and like friend groups and how people all kind of like socialize on social media. I've always found it so fascinating from a young age. So when I started doing this crochet page as like uh, one, an outlet to show people my crochet, but also a way for me to almost experiment <laughs> and play around in my own playground of social media engagement and understanding algorithms and things, then that was, I can see why I've kind of got to where I am now because of that interest that I have in all this. <laughs> uh, making unicorn right now, I have multiple legs left to make and I've already used over $50 of US yarn. Oh my God. How big is the unicorn? <laughs> Car hangers are so fun. Got Excel pathway for some chickens. So we'll see how they turn out. Oh my god, those are gonna be huge. Okay, going to bed so it's light here. Love that. You know, I was so anxious to shower. Worried I missed the Instagram call. <laughs> yeah, I just I kept ignoring them. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I find social media very interesting. So I really want to like talk about that a bit more on youtube and i don't really know like in what ways because i don't know if you have all seen croutons crochet here in the chat she talks about uh ways of working with social media or, or managing algorithms and things like that over on her crochet page as well so if you're interested in that stuff you go check out her page um but yeah i find it all very interesting and I find it very fun jumping onto new um, apps <laughs> and playing around with new features and things. What's my best pickup line? I don't think I have a good pickup line. If I was, anyone was ever going to ask me for like initial dating advice, I would say always be cheeky from the get-go. <laughs> if anyone wants my honest opinion, don't mind sharing it. But I don't have a great pickup line because those always sound very cheesy. <laughs> Check your tips out. Yeah, no worries. No, like my best tip for social media, if anyone really, because I'm going to tell you anyway, because I can, it's my life. Um, my best for, tip for, uh, my best tip for social media is to see who is doing well on social media their videos with what videos are going popular and things like that and then almost mimic it in a way so you can see what videos are doing well and if you can just like take that format of that video where there is something that's like i bet you can't make this and that's the start of the video you're holding your yarn your tools whatever and then by the end of the video, you show the finished result either by doing a montage or just a quick swipe of the yarn ball against the camera. Then you have hooked someone from the start of that video to the end of it. And that's a very basic transition <laughs> um, video. So just bad when it comes to posting. <laughs> I sometimes I don't feel like posting every day, but I kind of just I just push myself to do it. 
<laughs> Sometimes I don't like a video I put out, <laughs> but at least I'm trying. <laughs> Hi, Mar, welcome back. I was thinking a sloth would be nice. A lot of people have asked me to make a sloth, um, like a sloth buddy pattern. I don't even know where it's going with that one. I give it like extra long arms. Oh my god, that would be so funny. If I have like the bunny shape, a uh, bu bunny buddy shape, and then like imagine this arm here just like always down to the ground. <laughs> Maybe I will do a sloth. <laughs> I was thinking because I want to do some suggestions for Pride and ask my Patreon to suggest different animals for the next ma uh, pattern. Um, I was thinking either a penguin because I think penguins, don't they always have stories about them having like gay weddings? <laughs> um, one that I really, really want to do is a chameleon. I think it would be cool to make like a chameleon buddy and then have it in like a sweater, but in the sweater you can change to the different colors of the pride flag. And so with my Patreon now changing to an area where you have accessories as well as the monthly patterns, depending on what tier you're on, I was thinking of leaving that sweater design or how to change into a sweater uh, or a pride sweater in the accessories part and then leaving it in the pattern for the chameleon, you know? Make a sloth with a fuzzy yarn. Yeah, I need more fuzzy yarn. I just have the grey. <laughs> I post four days a week, I set an alarm to help me. Yeah, I set myself about half an hour to an hour every morning just to work on reels. I know I could batch content and make a bunch in one like two hour sitting, but... <laughs> Camellia the prize winner, right? That's the one I'm leaning towards. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it out there for the Patreon to vote on, but that's what I personally want to win because I think that's a really cute idea. Otherwise I was thinking like a lion because a pride of lions, I don't know. <laughs> I think the yeah, I want the chameleon to win, <laughs> right? Because then it's like you still have the same little green chameleon, but like they change colors. But like depending on what kind of gender or sexuality they're supporting, right? <laughs> Do people steal this idea? Shame on you. <laughs> but I'm also very open with me just talking about what I plan to do and stuff. I don't really... <laughs> I get... I'm really bad at keeping secrets of things coming up. Although I have one huge secret, which is... I'm excited to announce in a couple of months or so. So, just waiting. <laughs> To make this weird crochet double so you can just flip it inside out. That'd be cute. I was thinking about having this sweater as like as like a mod on the pattern. So it's not gonna be like a detachable sweater because trying to get clothes on and off this shape is really hard. Like even getting this overalls to be the right shape took so long. Um but yeah, the penguin I thought might be cute, but I could also do that for closer to Christmas time as well. Little bi pride chameleon, yeah, right? <laughs> could be made with more, yeah. I mean, you don't even have to do the sweater, so I could just. So, this is what my original bunny buddy pattern was it was either you make the bunny buddy or you make a bunny buddy with a sweater. And then I stopped doing the. I changed the pattern, so I took out the sweater part, but that's now part of this one here, the little bear buddy. Um, but I'm going to take all these pieces, like the overalls, the carrot, the sweater, uh, the hats, all these accessories that I'm putting on all these other buddies, and I'm going to put that in one of the Patreon tiers. It's just like an ongoing accessible library of accessories, so... Um, I have a five-hour test tomorrow, I want to crochet after I'm done with this, it probably takes like three hours, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> when there's times where I needed to actually apply myself and be prepared for, I don't know, like job interviews and things, I always just wanted to crochet. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm out of corporate now. <laughs> it was not for me. Crocheting a blanket as you join me. Cute! What kind of blanket? Stuffing the bunny into the overalls. <laughs> yeah, like, the the overall fit, 
the bunny very tightly, which is good. Um, no, that's it. That's it. It was good. <laughs> There's nothing more to say about that. <laughs> So that's what I was saying. So with the kangaroo buddy, which I'm working on currently, um, once I get its little boxing gloves and stuff together, I was trying to make like, cause this is, <laughs> this is a draft of what the shorts are going to look like. I was trying to make boxing shorts. And in the end I was like, these look ugly. <laughs> cause I tried to make them so they're all, like already kind of oversized. Cause that's what boxing shorts look like. But they just look, they look stupid. They look, they look so bad. <laughs> no, I was like, mm, never mind. It can just have the boxing gloves. It doesn't need to go. I don't need to be this extra. Maybe one day I'll go further, but I don't need to be that extra. Boxing gloves was fine as is. You made a turtle and a rabbit and a duck. What animal should I make next? You should make one of mine, Jenna. <laughs> You can make, what's a, what would go well with those? A turtle, turtle, bunny, duck. Maybe the otter? Maybe do the otter buddy? <laughs> Am I making a dragon? Yeah, I haven't even talked about, like, I've talked about this on my vlog, which is supposed to be coming out, so, like, in the next few days. Uh, but I'm working on a pattern test for Darla the Baby Dragon, and I realized when I made this YouTube title that I haven't even announced, like, publicly. <laughs> so this is the title, yeah, I'm working on a dragon, but, like, I was planning to sew it all together. Uh-uh-uh. It's giant shoes, or, yeah, I know, it looks like giant shoes, eh? I don't know. I think I'm just gonna leave it. I like it with just the gloves. It looks, it honestly looks fine. <laughs> yeah, so this is, I'll show you, I'll show you my Dala, because it's just here. Uh, although the tail went off somewhere. Here it is. So I made a little, let me just put it all together for you guys. Because right now it's just like all these buttons sticking out. <laughs> Get in. Oh my god. Don't stab me. Don't do it. Oh my god, these are all vicious. Stop it. <laughs> okay, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> And then the horn up here. Okay. It's all very loosely put together. But yeah, here's a little baby dragon that I have been working on. So it's going to be a little Dala the baby dragon. Right? It's really cute. So this is by Red Mills Crochet. And it's releasing in like end of this week, I believe it is. So... This is my one. It's not finished yet. It's gonna have a little fairy mane, like of a like a dark brown, I believe. Um, but that's what I'm working on after I finish the kangaroo buddy pattern. Because I need to get this one out. <laughs> so people can actually start testing my pattern. And then I can finish the other things. Uh, probably gonna design another pattern and go with the seal you made. Cute! I've always wanted to make a seal. I see a lot of cute seal patterns out there, but I just haven't done it. I'm also supposed to make a pattern from a book that I was sent, because that was the agreement of me receiving the book, but I also haven't done that. <laughs> uh, I've just got so many little things I always need to do, and I am not the most focused person. <laughs> Somehow I find the sewing part harder than the crochet part when I make my plushies. Sewing is a challenge in its own way. I think when you get better, like when you do a lot of the sewing, it becomes a lot more enjoyable. And I mean, we all just kind of get better at it. Like I'm still, there's still things that I need to fix up when I do sewing, but I'm pretty proud of how it looks nowadays. <laughs> like I know what I'm intending to do when I sew, but sometimes there's some things that stump me. 
like that one there the head and the body are two separate pieces so there's no like open stitches that i can sew onto the body or vice versa um so that's going to be a challenge in itself <laughs> uh looks like a pokemon yes i really okay this is another thing so with my patreon i've organized it that i'm doing a monthly pattern I'm going to be uploading my accessories into its own little box on there uh, so people can access those. But in addition to that, I'm doing another thing which it's not necessarily going to be released patterns, but I wanted to do Patreon exclusive patterns. So either little market makes or I wanted to make like a bunch of Pokemon patterns because I mean, I can't sell Pokemon patterns because Nintendo doesn't like people doing that and I just want to avoid anything like that with Nintendo. But I do want to make these Pokemon designs. Like, I've, that's why I wanted to do a lot of this Amigurumi stuff. And so I was thinking of making not necessarily patterns, but they're going to be like untested pattern notes uh, or like pattern drafts that my Patreon members will be able to access as soon as I've written them. So I'll be able to just like upload that into a, a Google folder and people can go check out my notes uh, as they are. <laughs> and then they can like, technically they would be like testing the pattern as they do it because they're not going to be tested. So there might be mistakes in there, but it's like a cool thing to have access to, I believe. Maybe the market ones can be tested, but the Pokemon ones, definitely not. You gotta glitch for a while as well. Am I back now? Did you hear what I was saying? It was so important. <laughs> my cat's still on the keyboard and changed my spreadsheet. It only has ten dollars of yarn. This makes so much more sense. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was thinking. I was like, because sometimes the the thing is, is like with pattern designing, the all the time and effort goes into a lot of like all my time gets sucked into either video editing or it is into the time between patterns because each pattern takes like a, maybe a three week to a month window to release because you have to create the pattern you have to create it again to make sure it works you also have to make sure you take process photos in at least the second or the third iteration of it all um and then you have to give your pattern testers like maybe a week to 10 days to actually test the pattern for you <laughs> and then you start it again but in that off time is normally when I'm working on videos as well, so. Because the things that I want to be known for on here, or with YouTube and everything, is either I want to be known as a well-known pattern designer with, like, a, a lovely series of patterns, which is what I think I've done. Um, and then also just known as a YouTuber for good Patreon host, because I want to make sure my community feels very valued and they're getting good benefits out of supporting me as an artist. And I want to make sure that I'm really focusing on that. Because we've done like the first three, four months of Patreon. Um, and it's been very basic in what I kind of offer in a way. Like it's not very varied between the tiers. Like, okay, there's one tier and it's pretty much just pattern benefits. Um, yeah. Although there's another thing I wanted to add. <laughs> I'm getting like so prepared to go very full time on this. Um, and that's me doing a exclusive podcast on the Patreon. And it's essentially me answering, not answering questions, but I'm going to put out some topics that I would like to just pretty much discuss and then let my Patreons chuck in either questions about it or vote for that topic. For example, like, if people want to hear about my experiences working with certain companies and why I might like them or not like them <laughs> and like things like that. Like if they want to hear my behind the scenes information of what I think about Hobie <laughs> or Premiere or opinions on like, I don't know, other people's like the made in the moment videos of all the scandals over there and stuff. So <laughs> I think it's just a fun little addition. And like, it's not just going to be me rambling. I will have points and things that I want to talk to about these things, but that's essentially what I want to add in there as well. Just recently watched you have a crochet for one hour 
video when you <laughs> counted stitches, it was very funny. <laughs> I try to bring like a very humorous side of things to the crochet world. And I think that's like where my brand falls into is being like having fun with crochet and not only are we creating cute little creations but we're having like a good time as a community doing it <laughs> so that's why i always make like a lot of joke videos uh and more recently i wanted to be a bit more educational as well so it's like a bit more of like being like the kind of like a fun school teacher <laughs> Considering my, my background in corporate was also in learning and development, I was uh, I started off as a coordinator and made my way up to being a learning consultant. So <laughs> education and facilitating is definitely at the forefront of my experience. Which is why I feel a bit more natural about organizing things for Patreon and for a community that wants to support me, you know? I'll be, I'd also be keen to do a few more challenge videos as well. <laughs> like in places of some of my vlog videos. I think that could be cute. Should be a counselor? I, maybe. <laughs> counselor for crochet. The crochet council sessions. <laughs> There's something there. Uh, where am I? I think that would be a cute time. Because I used to be, I don't know, people can see it when I say it. Um, but uh, when I was working at two of my old workplaces, I used to be the induction guy. And so anyone who's like new to the business would go to these induction sessions and I'd be the one running it. I'd be the one being like, let's learn about this, the fun organization you've joined. Let's play games. and do activities and have guest speakers come along. We can all ask them questions and <laughs> learn about this world together. So that's why I think I feel a bit more at ease was trying to create community and community vibes. <laughs> I used to run like a tour. <laughs> I used to do like a tour guide around Wellington City in New Zealand because I used to work for the council there. Um, and I would take people on, we'd do like a morning session where we meet all these like important people. And then the second half of the day was being on a bus and going around to different areas that like the council managed so people could see how our work as an organization would literally affect the city we're in <laughs> and like how it all connects together. So it was very fun. Uh, hi, Kyle. <laughs> I think using rubber bands is very similar to crocheting. Interesting. What do you mean using rubber bands? Like, together? <laughs> um, one place that we used to go to on those council tours is we, like, we'd go to the graveyard, <laughs> which is actually a really interesting place. Like, a lot of people don't talk about graveyards that much because it's so, like, associated with sadness and death, but... The functionality and the purposes of a graveyard and the people that work there, so inspiring and so interesting. Uh, can I ask a question, what kind of yarn do you use for the plushies? I use Honey Bunny by Hobie Yarns. Otherwise, I use uh, Premier Parfait uh, Chunky. Parfait Chunky from Premier Yarns. Um, but yeah, and so we used to like go on this tour and we'd end up at the graveyard and then we'd have our grave digger guy <laughs> he was this fun italian man and he would come along and he would talk to us about like all the mistakes they make because <laughs> it's like because it's like any workplace they make mistakes in graveyards too <laughs> so i'm going on a rant about graveyards because i just found it so interesting um, like when, like, cause some families will send through the wrong size coffin. And so there'll be like too small of a coffin. And he has to literally jump in the pit in the middle of a burial and like hack out the sides of the wall so they can fit this person in there. <laughs> Not good. Anyway, no experience with chenille yarn. I always rip it. It's a, it's an interesting yarn. Um, it's. Definitely one that you get very used to very quickly, and I can't, like, 
I find it hard to change back to smaller yarns like acrylics and cottons, but just the overall finish of a, a doll is so good. Um, Toucan from Hobie. I haven't tried Toucan yet. I <laughs> see this is something that I was going to talk about in a podcast if people wanted me to talk about Hobie, but I. As much as I really like Hobie and the yarns that they put out, they are so incessant if you ever join the influencer program. They offer so many different campaigns to all these creators out there. Just being like, hey, join in, join in, join in, blah, blah, blah. And then all they offer is sending you free yarn for quite a lot of content. And so they ended up they ended up making like a lot of like user generated content because of all these creators receiving free yarn from them. But it would be nice if they actually just paid creators. <laughs> like and I know they offer payments to like some individuals. But anyway. <laughs> That's why I'm a bit like uh and I haven't got two gun yet because I'm kind of making my stand at this point with, with them. <laughs> um, like they're great. Like they're a really nice company and everything. I just, I be, I get a bit iffy with craft companies that only send yarn and expectation for content, or ones who just like kind of message people. Like I'm, <laughs> I think I'm on Premier's bad side. <laughs> Because I told them off for using one of my videos. Um, <laughs> but they also did message me on Instagram like three weeks prior, which I just forgot about. And I was like, oops. <laughs> I said yes, but I didn't remember. And so when I saw my videos suddenly appear on their page, I was like, um, can you not? <laughs> I was just feeling nice at that original time. Uh, anyway... I was everyone tightening the magic circle. I just put up a video up on my shorts. It's also on my Instagram as well about how to tighten a magic circle with plush yarns. Um, what you essentially want to do is if you just tighten the yarn around the hook. So you do your first magic circle loop and you tighten it around the hook before starting your next stitch. Um, and then you just work in that tiny little magic circle. It tends to work out better. Um, and then once you get to your second round of the magic circle, you can normally pull it tight because it starts like loosening up the inner magic circle. If that makes sense. She's a bit squeaky, Toucan, but it still turns out well. Ah, is she like, is, is she? <laughs> is Toucan yarn very similar to Honey Bunny? Like, can it be interchangeable with Honey Bunny? Because that's what it looks like. And also, does it shed? <laughs> I feel like a lot of people want to avoid the shedding yarn, but... Uh, still learning, good to know. Yeah, there's, with chenille yarns, there's a lot of different tips and tricks. Uh, the main things I would just say with chenille yarn is to be very gentle with it and very patient with it, because it can damage easily. So if you are frogging it and stuff, it tends to get a bit damaged after like two or three frogs or undoings, if you don't know what frogging is. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's as soft and fluffy as honey. It snaps way easier. Interesting. So wait, toucan snaps easier. Ah. Toucan is slightly thicker, but slap, slaps, <laughs> it snaps easier. Interesting. It's what I used for the pink version of your red panda buddy. Ah. Okay. Okay. I see. Because how many colors do they have as well? It felt like they only had like not too many. Like 15 maybe. So you haven't had it snap. What? Oh, using the different yarn. Sorry. I see. <laughs> There's not many colors of it. Interesting. Maybe they're just testing to see how people respond to it first. Because, like, Honey Bunny's been my favorite plush yarn. Um, and, like, the only reason I'd ever do a campaign with Hobie is to get a restock. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> it's only when I'm in actually in need of getting new colors that I will do a campaign with Hobie and be like, send me this yarn because I need it for this project. <laughs> But, yeah. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't even know if it's like people are, like, are too shy to talk about <laughs> yarn companies like this. I do. Like, honestly, I would just do the campaign for the supply. Like, because then it's technically, like, it's making it worth it for me. And I'll, order, like, always order, like, a little bit more than I might necessarily need. <laughs> But, like, they've always been nice to me. Which is why, like, I can't not like them. <laughs> like, they seem like a really good company to work for. And the people who I've seen or, like, talked to there and stuff all seem very happy with it all and everything. I just, like, don't like how they approach social media with a lot of content creators. That's the only thing I really don't like. But apart from like, like that, they're great. The yarn's good. People who work there are good. It's just the campaigns get to me. <laughs> it's very smart of them to do that though. But also feels a little bit exploitative in a way. Uh, yeah, so I, that was in collab with them as well. Um, I was really confused at the end. So I only did like, yeah, so they sent me all the yarn for the seahorse pattern that was in collaboration with them. But then the end of the collab said something about like then upload it to their website or upload it through somewhere. And I was like, what is happening here? And then I just didn't really do it. <laughs> like, so that was the reason why I made the seahorse pattern. But then, like, the last two stages of it was about uploading the pattern with them. Or, like, you had to, like, submit it to them. And then I was like, oh, actually, I don't really want to submit the pattern to you. So I kind of just joined, like, yeah. Wait, so I got really, sorry, I keep asking this, but when you asked me about rubber, that's what I meant. So I'm really confused what the rubber band question is. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, the rubber band doesn't snap. I don't remember what the rubber band question is. <laughs> you purchased the seahorse pattern? Yay! That's the other thing. I was like, I didn't really want my pattern to be on a Hobie website. I'd rather just have it as my website. <laughs> I'm very conscientious about where my, where my product is and who is managing my products. Even though it can get exposure from them, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm glad people are loving the seahorse pattern as well. <laughs> Very proud of that one. Why don't you make a few more of those for the markets as well? You have a few of my patterns? Ah! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Which one's your favorite so far? Have you made them all? Yeah, I, li I like having my own patterns on my website. I don't really like having them too far spread out. Like, I'd love to have them on Ribbler. Because I think Ribbler is a lovely company. Um, who are, I think they're pushing towards doing more collaborations with creators and like paying them and things like that. Um, that's what I've just heard on the, my insights. Um... I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> oh, but I personally don't like trying to like reformat my own patterns to suit their website because that always like gets me annoyed. But I do like Ribbler and I would love to have my patterns on there. Ravelry, I can't understand. <laughs> it's too technically hard to use and I think a lot of people are going to move away from it until it becomes more functionable. Um, but my own website and Etsy seem to be pretty fine, so that's why I kind of stick to those. 
Uh, I have a unicorn seahorse and garden buddy. Your favorite is the seahorse, still making the unicorn. Yay! Is it the, all the three garden buddies? I really want to make another unicorn. I've been thinking about making like a yellow one lately. <laughs> but you can use rubber bands and use it in a similar way to crochet or something. That was the question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I think some people have used rubber bands in a similar way where they make like little geckos and things. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know about rubber bands or anything. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't get to see the solar eclipse because I was asleep because <laughs> I was on the other side of the world. So I missed it. I have to wait till 2028. I think it is, is the next one. Yeah, it was like really, it was the not the right time for everyone in. Australia. <laughs> Revelry used to be good, but since the update and Cass losing a champion, it's not as good. Yeah, because I, I mean, I learned all about the Revelry dramas through Emma's videos. Um, and it sounded like it's just become so inaccessible to so many people. So it's kind of like, well, what's the point of this site? My unicorn is a baby blue and white. Cute. I don't think I've seen a blue one yet. I may have, but that sounds so lovely. We're so cloudy where I love that I barely saw so the eclipse. Gotta wait 20 years. Oh my god. It was so cloudy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I just saw everyone everywhere wearing those little, like, tinted glasses. And I was like, how did everyone suddenly get a little pair of tinted glasses? Like, does everyone just have these lying around? Uh, snoozing on that one. I do love seeing them, though. Yeah. I, I was excited. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure the next one's 2028. And I think Australia gets to see it. I think. <laughs> Literally the eclipse glasses didn't work. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. It has truly become awful. It used to be my favorite place on the internet. Ah, oh, cause like they used to have such a community in the community boards, right? That was a big thing. But now, that, I guess, maybe there's that move to Reddit. <laughs> oh, good up here from Sonic. Oh, so were they just kind of, like, gifting them out at random places, I see. Yeah, I... Yeah, I just didn't see it. I was trying to think of, like, a meme I could... Like, a video I could post about this whole eclipse today to do with crochet, and I couldn't think of anything funny. <laughs> A teacher bought like 10 something pairs for us. And it was, yes, she wasted her money. Oh no. <laughs> Always oh, every store had those eclipse classes for free. Oh my god. Why were they just everywhere? I didn't realize it was like such a huge event. The best group was Lazy, Stupid, and Godless. And it just went poof. Oh, wait, like, was there like different group boards and things on Ravelry? Hi Camille, how are you? I'm I'm really good. I am just working on a little kangaroo head while sitting here and chatting with everyone. So it's been really nice. This has been a fun little live. <laughs> oh, did they just like remove the some of the boards or some of the community pages? That's wild. <laughs> I had no idea about that. I just thought like Ravelry was maybe just had like one big board of threads you could like scroll through. I didn't realize it was like a full community thing going on in there. Cause someone asked me about that on my threads poll when I asked where is the best crochet community. Um, and someone was like, you're not gonna include Ravelry? And I was like, what are you on about? <laughs> because I only started crocheting what, 2018, uh, like five years ago? So I was definitely on the outside of the, like where I think Reverie may have started going down. And even at that point, I was like, I can't be bothered. <laughs> like, uh, there's still some cute patterns on there. And I know people who sell their patterns over there, but yeah. To find out they have like, what, was it 6 million users and then only like four employees? That was wild. Uh, I didn't have a crochet club, but that would have been so cool to have a crochet club. 
I would have loved like a little craft club in, <laughs> in my high school or something. That would have been so neat. Maybe I should work on something. I mean, that's what I was saying. I want to work. I was saying, maybe I could do that. I was like, wait, I'm like almost 30. I don't go to school. <laughs> I still have the mentality that I was like 18 now. Oh no, wait, I lost count. Uh oh. I went autopilot on this round. Oopsies. <laughs> One, two. Yeah, okay. Back to the start. <laughs> A yarn cafe? Yeah, I am so keen to start a yarn cafe sometime soon. I, like, I dream about this a lot, and every time I'm walking along with my boyfriend and we see, like, old, just, like, rent, like rental spaces, I'm always like, I could put a cafe here. <laughs> and sell my own, like, yarn line or something. I think that would be cute. Ah, there's also a volunteer mod. I didn't know about that part. Fiverr stuff is your Roman Empire. <laughs> so much time on Ravelry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, crafts and crochet in general is my Roman Empire. I never stop thinking about this stuff. <laughs> I never stop talking about it. I never stop working on things. I'm just constantly crocheting and within the crochet world, thinking about projects, being inspired. Just never stops. <laughs> it's too far for me to come. I mean, maybe it'd be a, like a great destination for people visiting Australia. They'd be like, oh my god, we can go visit the Zeddy Cafe. Like, Caffeine Me Zeddy. I don't know, there'll be some name out there. <laughs> like, I did have fluff on my feet. Oh. Interesting. Make it the best yarn in the world. I think it would be a really good yarn. <laughs> uh, so someone starting one in Mab. Oh, that was a April Fool's joke. That was Source of Fiber. <laughs> she posted like a AI picture of a yarn store with her name on it. And people were like, oh my God. And I was like, oh, wait, no, I want to do that. And then she was like, sorry, it was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> Caffeine me, Zeddy. Coffee me, Zeddy. Craft me coffee. <laughs> craft and coffee. Coffee crafts. There's a name out there. <laughs> cafe Zeddy. I would love to have a cafe just called Zeddy's. <laughs> the Zeddy brand. Um... Da, 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 da. So some old lady creating the local library. I thought those are my people. Yes, they are my people too. I agree. Always want to go to Australia. Oh, Australia is really lovely. I really enjoy it here. Bean me up, Zeddy. Wow. <laughs> Bean me up. Damn, I was really on that plane. I know. I think she kind of like accidentally shot herself in the foot with that one. <laughs> I think so many of you were keen. Sorry, I'm just grabbing my safety eyes, but they're like in a little box up here. Ugh. Also, how good is Lo-Fi Girl? I have to... I'm doing this all blindly right now. <gasps> Get in my hand. That's silly. Okay. <laughs> I dream about opening some sort of fibers gym. I would want to, I want to do all the crochet things. Yeah, I know. I would love to make like a craft cafe and have it so people can come in. There'll be like a community space to do classes and things, and then like we'd have like a wine night or something. Uh, which I don't know if I can provide wine. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> That's the idea anyway. <laughs> tried the Woobles kit. I think it was popular a few years ago. I see Woobles kits around. Uh, I've never done a Woobles kit, but I also don't need to because I've kind of got all the yarn and stuff. Uh, they seem alright. <laughs> they seem like a good place for beginners. You'd go to Australia for a yarn cafe? Yeah, I think it would be quite a destination. You tested for Woobles? What? 
I'll bring my I'll bring my crochet when traveling. It's the only time strangers come up to me. I once had a lesson on pattern reading to an old lady once. Cute. I thought about doing a video on pattern reading. <laughs> yeah, woobles, they seem alright. They did try to <laughs> I have like so many weird interactions with all these companies. Um I did <laughs> they did ask if I wanted to be like a crochet teacher for them, like for their virtual classes or for like yeah, virtual classes for corporate lessons and things. Um which I did apply for and I didn't get it in the end because I think I might have been like a bit late or something or like no they already found someone by the time I applied and I was like oh okay well never mind um and then what was it but then like looking back at it like what they were going to offer me as pay was like very very low so I'm glad I didn't take it <laughs> like... uh hi Tracy welcome along they got popular because of Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly, they're doing Harry Potter stuff. I know. I saw that as well. I was like, oh. <laughs> Not the Harry Potter stuff. <laughs> I find people, when they do Harry Potter things, it's always like... It's... <laughs> I know it's like been such like an escape for so many people in their childhoods and things. And so I never want to like rob anyone away from trying to like re-feel like a nostalgic feeling. But I do notice when people do Harry Potter things. And I do think about the <laughs> the the transphobia that's associated with that. And I like I can't help but not associate that. I got uh, requested to do a chapter for a book or like submit a pattern for a book. And I was like, oh my God, it sounds really good. Until they told me it was a Harry Potter book. And then I was like, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> I was like, I don't care if this is my first time ever being offered like a, a book publication. I was like, I can't do a Harry Potter design. I'm sorry. I saw a great breakdown video and they found the hook that's provided is absolutely terrible. And that was the only complaint. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cause I've seen, yeah, I've seen a few creators do Woobles kits and things. Maybe I'll do a Woobles kit, uh, video one day. I know they reach out to some creators saying like, Hey, <laughs> this is the thing that I hate with companies is when they reach out to creators as well. I know Weird Knitters does this as well. And Alexandria Massey had the funniest video on this, but it's when they message them and they're like, Hey, we can send you a free kit for you to crochet our item and then talk about it. But also like, I don't want to make their item. <laughs> I'm happy to like receive the free kit and have it as part of a giveaway or something, but I don't want to make like spend another few hours making something. Um, and Alexandria Massey, if you saw her video on this, where she got like the sweater from We Are Knitters and it was the same kind of vibe where she was like, <laughs> meant to. <laughs> She was meant to like get this pattern and talk about it and she did she got the kit and it was like the yarn was so heavy so stretchy and she was like this is so saggy she's like i followed this to a t this is awful <laughs> and she just complained about the pattern the entire time and she had to like turn the sweater into a dress because she was like it's growing over time the more she wears it it just keeps stretching out like <laughs> in real time on the video <laughs> It is, yeah, polarizing, yeah. See, that's what I mean. I was like, being part of the queer community, I was like, I can't, I was like, I can't do Harry Potter things. It just wouldn't be good. <laughs> Rubles are expensive though. Yeah, we and it is also expensive. <laughs> but I mean, they kind of have to be, I guess, like, they do put a lot of work into it and I guess they have a lot of overheads, but kind of annoying, right? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. I've almost finished the head of the kangaroo. I think it took me a little bit longer than anticipated because, I don't know, just sitting here chatting <laughs> and sometimes I get distracted. Uh, can you tell me where I can find a video on designing my own crochet toys? If you're looking for ways of understanding how to design shapes and things, 
Complicated Knots has a very good, I think she has like a video or two on how to create shapes with Ami Good Ami. Um, but if you're looking like for a tutorial, just on how to make a doll, then there's plenty out there. I have one on a bat. <laughs> I actually have another one on a little Christmas tree. <laughs> but I would say Complicated Knots is probably the best person for if you're wanting to learn how to do pattern designing. If that helps. <laughs> but even in saying that, I think there's another, if you're depending on the yarn that you're using, it kind of, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with that, because they use like acrylic and cotton yarns as well. Sometimes it doesn't match up with, uh, how, how do I explain this? Because the yarn is larger, the designing on plush yarn creations can be slightly different to what they might explain with acrylic or cotton yarns. So you might notice with... Uh, this is something I noticed with like a lot of my creations back in the day. Which I don't actually have in any of these patterns because I caught like picked it up early on. But like when you're doing an increase from the snout, let me show you. So when you're doing an increase from the snout, what I do is I get to the point where I start doing my increases here and I'll do like six increases in a row. What a lot of patterns tend to do is they'll go six increases and then the next one on top of that, they'll go stitch, increase, stitch, increase, stitch, increase, stitch, increase, going around. But what that does is it makes the increases all start like weighing heavier towards one side. And so because it is a larger creation, it means that once, and like because it also works in a spiral, it means that your snout will be here, but by the time you get to the end of the head, it might start like have switched over here because of that weighted, of those weighted increases out to the side. So that's why you notice with a lot of my patterns, I go up here, I do those six increases, and then I'll go either like stitch, increase, stitch, increase, stitch, increase, if I want it all to be weighted very up here, or go increase stitch, um for the first three and then go stitch increase that way so it kind of like weighs it all towards a certain direction anyway that's just an insight from me <laughs> i don't know if people find that interesting or not <laughs> but that's why i do that that certain way if we had to do a bo bobble stitch um I always forget how. Is it bubble stitch? I think is like yarn over, put through, yarn over, pull through, and you have three loops on, and then you'll yarn over and pull through the first two, and then you repeat that. Learn so much about shaping from just making things with your patterns. Yeah, I am very specific when it comes to shaping. <laughs> and I'm always trying to improve it so my patterns have like, like a reason for certain shapes and things. Because the other thing is, is people who use yarn over versus yarn under, it might work with yarn under, but if you're just doing yarn overs, you might have a looser stitch and it'll start like shaping in a different way. Yeah, what Camille said. <laughs> so you'll notice with like a few of my different heads, you'll see what I'm trying to achieve. So with these two here, um, <laughs> when you try to do a shift stitch, yeah. <laughs> so you'll see with these um, patterns here versus the kangaroo when it's a release. These two here, the ca uh, red panda and the raccoon, I made it so all the increases were weighted out to the sides from the snout. So the face is actually a lot more wider. Whereas the kangaroo, um, wherever it's gone. Oh, it's in my hand. The kangaroo, I've made all the increases in here. So it should be weighting like pulling more upwards and give like more of a longer face. It's very slight in the differences, but it's how I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, I wonder if I should do a video on that as well. <laughs> Things to note when designing patterns, but that's like the one thing that I'm kind of proud of that I figured out on my own without having to look up different uh, 
videos and whatnot, that tip especially was like one that I kind of learned from my own practicing. But I feel like the more you crochet, it's so good to like try out different people's patterns and things because yeah, you learn so many different things from that as well. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I will put that in my agenda of designing, pattern, like, pattern design videos. I'm almost at the very end here of the head. I thought I was going to be working on the dragon as well, but looks like I'm not. <laughs> Uh, you do an invisible decrease stitch. If you're ever doing Ami Gurumi, it should always be uh, an invisible one, unless it's like a flat piece. But if you're working in the round, then definitely do an invisible. Otherwise, you'll see it. I know some people have started doing a... Um, rather than doing like an invisible decrease, they just kind of skip a stitch, which I thought was very interesting for plush yarns, but... What the hey? If it works, it works. Um, what was I doing? I was gonna grab something. Uh, so good. Love my setup. Yeah, <laughs> it's very cute. This is my little workspace. I've got. One screen here, one screen here. I've got all my tools and things, and then I've got like my wall of plushies behind me. But I've already knocked some down earlier on the stream, so I'll put some back up. <laughs> I worked hard to achieve this setup. <laughs> you try to skip a stitch of how you can see the hole. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was being told, like, recommended to skip a stitch, and I was like, that seems wild. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't think that'll work for me. Cause like my stitches are so tight. So if I did that, like there would just be these weird little bumps going on, you know? So maybe don't do that one. I hadn't tried it out myself yet. So thank you for sharing your wisdom, Camille or Kimmy. Have I heard of Bluey? Of course I've heard of Bluey. I live in Australia. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I have a favourite episode because I don't have, like, I, my nephew's just started watching it, but I'm never hanging out with him when he's watching TV. Uh, so I don't know if I have any favourite episodes. Uh, I was supposed to make him a giant Bluey doll, which I got halfway through, but I just never finished it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I wonder if I can, I just realized something. I was supposed to like film myself doing a little actual video here. So I've got my camera. I'm gonna do this in the live as well. So thanks everyone being part of this. <laughs> I'm gonna put this here and just see what it looks like. Cause I wanna do like footage of us in the vlog as well of like me streaming and chatting to you guys. Let's just do that. There we go. <laughs> now you can see the camera in the background there. A little streamception. Cause I wanted to do more footage of me, I don't know, just being on lives and Showing off what I'm getting up to in my vlogs. <laughs> this is the, the behind the scenes of everything. The true insight. Because I'm hopefully uploading this one either tomorrow or the next day. Hi vlog! Um, it is a Sony... It's a Sony something. Is it on here? I'll tell you shortly. <laughs> 
Hello, future. Yeah, I'm doing a vlog where you're kind of following me, like, making the Dala pattern. <laughs> Where's the last one? I mean, it's not my pattern, but... Uh, Whereas the last one is more about me designing the kangaroo pattern. So I'm going to show off the kangaroo with boxing gloves once I've got it all pieced together. Which I can show you a very quick draft of it very shortly. Because I'm about to finish the head. And then I can put it on a body. And I can put the little gloves next to it. And you guys can see the vision that I'm going for. Because <laughs> I'm hoping that I'll get that done today as well as... All the other pieces of the kangaroo and everything and then i can actually take pictures and put it out for testing tomorrow and i know i'm like a day late but we're doing our best have i ever named my crochet i have thought about renaming my plushies and things or like my patterns to be names so calling it like zaddy the bunny or something like that <laughs> tell the game hi 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 from the stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought about giving my patterns like different names and things, uh, but I decided that going like just keeping it as like the little so and so buddy was like the best way for me. <laughs> what, the names? Or me waving on the stream? <laughs> Yeah. Kind of quint cringe waving. You don't like me waving? Chin up. <laughs> That's going to be what's included in the vlog. Maybe I'll include this in the vlog. <laughs> so Oh, did, have you tried vlogging before? <laughs> I love doing my little intros. It's become like a running gimmick of me never fully knowing how to say what I do. <laughs> so every time I like jump into a, um, a video, I'm always like, hi. Oh wait, no, I'm like, hi friends. No, what do I say? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach, aka Crochet Me Zeddy, and I am a crochet. And then I just start rattling off different titles of a crochet artist. <laughs> but I love a running gimmick. <laughs> I think it's cute. <laughs> okay, there we go. Head is all stuffed, and now I can grab the body and the boxing gloves I can show you what it looks like very shortly dun, 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 dun. also you're all right Jenna don't worry <laughs> uh, I only just started revlogging and I've been finding it a really fun it's kind of like because I used to, like, my vlogs used to just be me starting off and I'd just sit down in the front of the camera and I'd do one entire take um, of me sitting there talking about all the projects I'm working on and then I'd be like, bye! And it's not really a vlog, it's me just kind of updating everyone. So now I just kind of turn on the camera. Um, I just turn on the camera and I just start talking. <laughs> and then, like, if there's something that I can't explain or I feel difficult talking about, I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just, like, pause for a moment and then reset it. But, like, I think a lot of people just enjoy, like, watching me or anyone just get excited and talking about projects just as they are and just putting my thoughts out into the world and being like, this is what I want to work on, this is my plan for the day, so let's see how we do it. So, I'm going to turn the camera off now. <laughs> Bye vlog. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thanks for joining in my vlog. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see how this looks. You have the right personality for vlogging. I well, the thing is, is like I, like I will agree. Thank you. Um, I. Like, I've always been someone who's pretty comfortable talking in front of, like, a camera or, 
on stage or anything like that. Like I'm happy to talk to about random things. But the other thing is, is like, I never do like Instagram stories and I never really update people on things. Like I just, that, that's never been a part of my social media story. I've always just like either talked on lives like I am now where I just like talk about everything and I just keep talking because I don't know, I can. Um, but doing vlogs and things, that's something that I'm like, it's a bit new to me. So I'm still trying to figure out what like the right way to talk about things is or yeah <laughs> it's been an interesting journey we're only on like week two of it all so we've got more to go <laughs> uh have you made an octopus have you made anything new i'm currently working on a boxing kangaroo as we speak i have this little dragon which i'll be featuring a lot in the next vlog uh once i sew it all together which i'll do this afternoon um yeah <laughs> but I want to get this little kangaroo pattern ready and tested and everything like that but I just have to get all its photos ready to go so uh, what I'll likely do so you people know my way of running this is that today I will probably sew it all together uh get all the before photos or something um I don't know. I'll get this, I'll get the boxing kangaroo sewn together and I'll get my other kangaroo, this one here, and I'll take photos of them. And then probably tomorrow, even though I've put out the tester call to everyone, I will then get all the progress photos tomorrow while I'm choosing testers and the pattern's not fully completed because it's just better for me to actually start that process like two days earlier. Um, but I need to have like two like versions of the finished products to actually show off to people so they're interested and understand what's involved in the test. Does that make sense? Sorry, I just kind of rambled for a bit. <laughs> so essentially, I haven't finished the pattern, but I'll call for a pattern test before I have actually finished the pattern, because I, all I know, like, all I need to do then is just, like, upload videos and photos. Love your videos. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel Castillo Perez. Made sense to you, good. <laughs> I'm trying to be efficient with my timing. Like, I don't want to just, like, finish the pattern and then be like, all right, now I'll do the call. I'd, like, rather do the call when I know I'm about to finish the pattern. I do my call out. So I do two different ways. I do two slots of my pattern tests. So I always get eight pattern testers. Eight. Uh, with all my designs. And six of those will be from either Patreon and General Public. And then I do at least two from my Patreon. Uh, just because I want to make sure my Patreon community is always included. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I'll do a call out and I'll have a sign up form through my website. Which I will connect people to one way or the other. Um, and then I go through that and I check everyone's... Uh, thank you, Mara. <laughs> and Daniel, yeah. Um, and then I'll go through and check everyone's Instagram, see what kind of photos they're taking, if they're able to actually produce a nice photo, is usually what I'm looking out for, and if they have, like, a nice personality, um, because I like to make it a good, friendly vibe. Before we go to school, then I get scared. You may as well apply. I do pick, like, a range of people. It doesn't really depend on skill level so much as long as people have evidence that they can follow a pattern um and that they can take a good photo that's all i'm really looking for um just realized you've been chatting on both accounts i thought your name was changing <laughs> i didn't really say anything but i did notice uh still need more experience with that one week of you only have one week of crochet experience oh my god you got so much more to learn, so much more to do. There's so many things you could make. <laughs> okay, let's put this together. I always use uh, just a bunch of like hairpins when I'm putting them together. Just so, oh, actually, oh my God, I can use my army sticks. So I'm gonna take my dragon apart. So these are from Dandelion Tonic. Uh, she gifted me these as a thanks for putting, to, like, putting together the Yanni Awards. So it was very, really kind of her. 
So these sticks, you just kind of like stab into the head. I don't know if I can... I wish I could tilt you guys down a bit more because right now you're just on top of like a little phone holder thing that doesn't tilt any further. Maybe I'll do it over here. <laughs> but yeah, these are the little sticks that you put in Creations and they just kind of like stab it through and it just kind of keeps them in place so you can sew them together. I don't actually use them for the sewing part, but they're nice for when I'm just like wanting to do something like that. <laughs> uh, I get scared about my photos I try but I don't know if they're good all you need for a good photo anyone who is trying to take good pictures of their crochet is you need to not use indoor lighting you need to just go outside and hold your piece in front of somewhere that doesn't get direct sunlight but has nice sunlight and is just a bush <laughs> that's all it is find a bush hold it out take a picture not in direct sunlight and just natural light <laughs> you should make a discord server i have a discord server so it's been i've been putting a lot more effort into it more recently uh it's part of my patreon services so people can go onto my discord and they, we can share things that we're working on and chit chat about things take them on the grass yeah exactly there's plenty of ways to do it all. <laughs> um, I need more pins. Would I make a banana split bunny crochet? <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Uh, my friend Drew, he released a crochet pattern, which is like a boonana. So it's like a little bunny inside a banana peel. Um, if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> I thought it was a very cute design. Personally. Okay, where's the other arm? Get in. Ah, uh, you see it? Those little boxing gloves? They're kind of hard to see in this light because they're dark, which was my mistake, but whatever. <laughs> uh, um, my dear, because it's got a pretty bit generic kind of background. Yeah, like as long as you're just holding in front of like a, a blank background, it's pretty fine. But you see the little gloves? I'll hold it closer. Huh? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so that's going to be the boxing mod, which I am just putting together. I did wonder, like, because I'm not doing boxing shorts, I thought about doing, like, a heavyweight belt. But I think that's something I might think about during the actual pattern test, because I can't be bothered figuring it out now, and this is fine as is. But if I did, like, a little heavyweight belt that kind of went around, I don't know. There's an idea there, but I can't think of it right now. But I love it with just, like, its little gloves. Which I suppose could be, like, mittens for another pattern, but... <laughs> They are made to be, like, slightly bigger than the usual hands. Uh, am I married? No. <laughs> also, I think my seat keeps, like, deflating. Like, I'm actually... I keep, like, looking like I'm sitting down lower, but it's my seat just over time deflates. <laughs> Making you think of Kangaroo Jack. Yeah, I want to make another one that would be, like, a light brown with red gloves and then have this blue one with blue gloves. Thank you. So I just need to put the tail and the ears together as well as this little pouch and then I'm good to go with that one. But I think that's what I'm going to, I think this is going to be the end of my video now uh, because I've been on for almost two hours. So it's been really nice to chill out and chat with everyone. Um, so I'll get this kangaroo pattern all sorted, tidied up. I'll do the pattern tester call tomorrow. I'm going to go jump over on my Patreon and do a little poll asking people what they want to do as my next month pattern. <laughs> um, and then, then what else? Oh my god, I've got so many things to do. I'm going to sew together Darla the Dragon and then I'm going to weave in my ends on my sweater and then I've actually got a shift at my restaurant today. So, uh, <laughs> I've got a lot to do and I also want to edit some vlog, so... It's it's a fun time, everyone. Ugh. <laughs>
So I will see you all to not tomorrow. I will see you all soon. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it for my first like like YouTube live like this. I yeah. I'll see you all next time, whenever that might be. Am I sure this is like a weekly thing? Maybe every two weeks. I don't know. I'm just gonna go. But thank you for hanging out and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> see ya.